So what is, what's the reflexive property? Why do we need it? Uh, this is kind of a thing that sits out here on an island until we actually start doing some proofs. All right, because this is something that wouldn't make any sense to do unless you're actually doing a proof. Um, so I'm going to introduce it in this uh, in this unit. We'll use it in the next couple of things that we're going to do um, after this section of problems, um, because we'll actually start kind of putting together some beginning proofs. They're not really proofs; we're just kind of putting piecing some things together. Anyways, what we're trying to do, uh, we're ultimately going to need to be able to put all of this stuff together to get a final conclusion. It's almost always involves some sort of congruent triangles. All right, so pretty much every proof that you're going to see in there someplace is going to need you to find two triangles that are the same for some different reason. All right, to do this, we're going to need pair of congruent sides and angles between the two triangles. That's what we're going to need. Again, we haven't talked about this yet. It's actually the next section of the thing that we'll do. Um, you know, so we're going to need to be able to say, ah, oh, these two sides are the same, these two angles are the same, stuff like that. So what happens is. I've got two triangles here. I'm gonna highlight this one in yellow. I'm gonna highlight this one in green. So I've got two equal triangles, two, two triangles, they're not equal triangles. Um, and when I look at them, they share this side right here in common. And what I mean by that is both triangles have side ST in it. That means that I'm guaranteed that these two triangles have one, si one side that's exactly the same in both of them, all right? It's this side, ST. If it, in the green triangle, it's exactly as long as it is in the, S in the yellow triangle because it cannot change size, okay? Again, this seems really dumb right now, okay? And for some of you, it'll seem really dumb no matter what because you think everything in geometry is dumb. But if I'm trying to prove two triangles are congruent, it is vital that I find pair of congruent sides and angles. So I can be like, okay, yeah, this triangle is the same as this triangle. So this is called the reflexive property. Typically I put an X on something and it's when it's shared between two triangles. Okay, shared between two triangles. That's the one time I'm gonna use this. It is 99% of the time a side. All right, if it pops up as an angle, I'll show you. I'm sure at some point in something there'll be um, an angle that's shared, it, it happens very, very rarely, but it is possible for an angle. And what you would write down in this situation is that ST is congruent to ST because, all right, now there's two ways to write this. You can just write because reflexive property. All right, I like to write down because anything is congruent to itself. Okay, because again, to me, I don't want to memorize things. I don't want to memorize reflexive property. I'm going to be like, why are those two things the same? Because they're the same thing, okay? ST is congruent to ST because it's literally the same line, okay? And if you wrote because it's literally the same line, I would give you credit for it, okay? But you are allowed to write reflexive property here. Uh, a lot of times when you see me do things in answer keys, I'll um, write anything's equal to itself and then parentheses reflexive property. Um, but you do not need to write both. It's not necessary. Um, you know, most of you will probably choose to write reflexive property. Um, and just because I like to be difficult, I'll write anything equal to itself. 